Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to yet more Warhammer 40k lore. But today, I want to spurg out just a little bit on a absolutely minusculely tiny part of 40k lore that I nevertheless find very fascinating in its potential suggestions and ramifications. Namely, one of the Ordo Minoris of the God Emperor's Most Holy Inquisition. The Ordo Machinum. I'm sure it'll come as no great surprise that the purview of this particular minor order of the Inquisition is the Adeptus Mechanicus. Now you even just try telling me that's not an intriguing proposition. An arm of the God Emperor's Most Holy Inquisition dedicated to the Adeptus Mechanicus, a faith that Whilst claiming to worship the God Emperor, of course, we know that isn't entirely true, now is it? And it is also one of the key core pillars of the Imperium. Without the Mechanicus's forge worlds, without their void docks, without their expertise in standard template constructs technology, the Imperium would simply not exist. At least not its current form. Without their technology, without their aid, without their production, humanity would swiftly be reduced to a near pre-technology state. Little more than scattered bands of savages living in the ruins of past glories. This too is the reason why the Adeptus Mechanicus is given a remarkable leeway within the Imperium, a great deal of power, a position on the High Lords, and the freedom to carry out their own agenda, in a way near unrivaled by any other arm of the Imperium, save perhaps the Inquisition themselves. And in part, this also stems from the fact, of course, that the Adeptus Mechanicus is not technically, theoretically, a part of the Imperium, but rather an ally. Although that is in essence a distinction without a difference at this point, as the two are bound in a thoroughly symbiotic relationship. The Imperium may not be able to live without the Adeptus Mechanicus, but without the numberless armies of the Imperium, the House of the Machine and Cog would fall to dust, rust and ruin almost as swiftly. And so, any oversight body, which is in essence what the Inquisition is, will need to tread with delicate care, so as to not upset the balance, whilst also making sure that the balance is not upset by external factors. Because, of course, the purpose of the Inquisition isn't merely being bumbling idiots and the centerpiece of various plot points. They are there to prevent the corruption of the Imperium. They are there to prevent it falling to darkness. They are there to weed out the rot at the heart of Imperial society, and prevent chaos cults and infiltrators, be they heretic or xenos, from upsetting the balance. And so, obviously, this would go for the Mechanicus as well, at least to a certain extent. Again, there's a great deal of politics at stake here. Though, I do need to elaborate on one little thing here. When I mentioned that this was an absolute minuscule piece of lore, despite its apparent importance, I was not kidding. I, I think I have seen precisely one mention of the Ordo Machinum ever. Or if it's been mentioned again, at the very least, I am unaware of it. And I think it was in the... 6th uh, edition Inquisition Codex? Or was it Witch Hunters? Does it, the Inquisition has not been overblessed with codices. They've been playable in various aspects or types over the course of 40k. Uh, Witch Hunters, for example, is probably my favorite, as you could make up full inquisitorial retinues. That was back in the third edition, and I think after that they didn't get... No, it, it's gotta be sixth edition Inquisition, because I don't think they even got a codex up until then. Say... Were they in the Sisters of Battle Codex? <laughs> this is some fairly esoterical nonsense right here, but no, Demon Hunters maybe. 
No, no, that was third edition too. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, we're talking about a decade ago, okay? I'm sorry, my memory is getting hazy around that point, but... Regardless, as far as I know, the Ordo Machinum has only ever been mentioned once. And, you know, if somebody else has seen some other mentions of it, do let me know, because I'd be very much interested in seeing it. And then, it was described very briefly as a particular Ordo Minoris of the Inquisition that looked into the Adeptus Mechanicus, but they were especially interested in STC technology. Which is, of course, one of the Adeptus Mechanicus's most important and foremost missions. The discovery, the recovery, the reverse engineering, and the application of standard template constructs. And this, in return, is of course because the recovery of even a small fragment of STC technology has the potential to upend the entire Imperium's understanding of technology and provide an enormous boost to the Imperium. Thus, of course, the Inquisition would have a vested interest in making sure that this tremendously beneficial technology is used as well, as widely, and as properly as possible, and also to avoid that any over-ambitious adepts of the Mechanicus do not elect to simply keep the discovery for themselves so as to outcompete their peers. Allow me also a, a slight sidestep here on the topic of STC as well. I did do a video on reverse engineering in the Imperium that gives you a bit more of an in-depth insight. But in essence, the Adeptus Mechanicus are of the opinion that any and all technology worth inventing has already been invented during the Golden Age of Technology. And the Adeptus Mechanicus's purpose is thus not to invent anything new, but to find those old fragments of the Imperium's knowledge, and then figure out how to use them to... Well, any and all means that they possibly can. Say the, um, the oft-mentioned example of the STC that created super sharp knives, for example. In this case, let's assume that we are talking about some sort of a uh, cutting or refining tool that sharpens the knives to the point where they are as sharp as they possibly could be. Let us assume that this is a laser, for example, that cuts the edge of the metal until it is as thin and as sharp as it potentially could be, alright? Well, what could one do with this? Making knives is obviously one thing, and that might simply be the, the original uh, source of discovery. They might discover what it was essentially a device for sharpening kitchen knives during the Dark Age, but then now they're thinking, okay, well obviously we're going to give this to our military first and foremost, as they will now have sharper knives. Duh. But if you then have that laser beam, well, it could potentially be used to eliminate imperfections in metal, assuming it is accurate enough to target very specific molecular structures. Or maybe it could be used as an, an enormous weapon, creating a tremendous cutting beam. Or maybe it is some sort of ultra-highly um, focused light, a laser essentially, that could be used to improve las guns. All of these would be then theories that the Adeptus Mechanicus would come up with and try to figure out if it is possible to achieve via reverse engineering. Though bear you in mind it is not as simple as all that as when I say reverse engineering, I'm talking a whole religious ceremony just to remove a screw. A piece of STC technology is so unfathomably valuable that they can't simply just pick it apart to figure out how it works. Every single last touch on that thing must be carefully documented, and the opportunity to even try to reverse engineer anything like this would only ever be granted to the absolute highest echelons of the Adeptus Mechanicus, meaning that any attempt to do anything will take decades, centuries, millennia even, and there is no guarantee they'll actually come up with anything worth using. This, too, would then probably be part of the Ordo Machinum's purview, to try and make sure that this process is 
well, as effective as it can be within the constraints of the Imperium's system. But I also imagine that it would have a bit of a wider power as well, because if it is overseeing the Deptus Mechanicus, again, it is overseeing one of the most important elements of the Imperium society, and one that isn't exactly immune to corruption, and certainly isn't immune to infighting, to bickering, and destructive feuds and rivalries that can seriously hurt the Imperium at large. Thus, I imagine that the Ordo Machinum goes a little bit more in depth than just overlooking STC technology, because hey, they wouldn't even have the technical knowledge half the time to understand the technology, never mind making an educated decision as to how to imply, imply, employ that technology. And so I imagine the Ordo Machinum would apply their particular expertise a bit more broadly. Take, for example, Xenos technology. Mm, oh, there's an interesting one. Because, of course, the aliens have all kinds of tech that the Imperium does not have. Again, the Imperium is of the opinion that any and all tech that is worth discovering has already been discovered, but occasionally even the alien might have something interesting to offer insofar as they might explain other things. For example, when a um, Magos biologist experiments on Tyranid DNA, it is not to figure out what the Tyranids are doing necessarily, it is to figure out some part of an ancient puzzle of Imperium imperial technology, or pre-imperial technology to be precise, like acids for example. How did humans in the golden age of technology create acid of a certain strength? Okay, well the Tyranids appear to be able to create an acid of approximate similar strength, so let's figure out how they did it, and then in turn we can figure out how the humans did it. That's kind of the mindset. But engaging with any sort of Xenos tech is of course dangerous, because it is not just chaos that has the potential to corrupt. And so the Ordo Machinum would come in and make sure that they're using the correct technology in the correct way, and to make sure that the technology is not using the Magus, because as they, this is actually a bit of a delicate balance yet again, for all Xenos technology is not inherently evil. After all, the god emperor planted his uh, divine behind upon a chair made at least in part of Xenos tech. And if it's good enough for the emperor, it is good enough for the Imperium. Meaning that at the end of the day, the Ordo Machinum needs to make a bit of a risk versus reward judgment call. When a Magos is, um, say the previous example, studying a piece of Tyranid biology, okay? Well, what exactly is his purpose in doing this? Is he trying to, for example, figure out a mutational genome that could be used in crops to allow them to survive on incredibly hostile worlds. Okay, well the benefit of this would of course be a potentially enormous increase in the Imperium's food production. The potential risk of this might be that we don't know exactly how that genome works. Uh, it might create tomatoes the size of basketballs, or it might create tomatoes the size of basketballs with teeth, which might in turn endanger the Imperium's food production quite severely. So what do you do? Do you, as an Inquisitor, put the needs of the starving hordes of the Imperium first? and in turn accept the non-insignificant risk of a Magos biologist making a whoopsie, and in turn getting a few solar systems eaten by tomatoes. It could happen. <laughs> Trust me. Or do you choose the safer path and gently nuzzle the barrel of your bolt gun underneath the Magos's chin and pull the trigger? Or perhaps this is one of those rare scenarios where not leaping to either ridiculous extreme immediately is the correct choice. <laughs> now this is one of the weaknesses of the God Emperor's most holy Imperial Inquisition. They tend to view things in a rather black and white light. 
with a sprinkling of hypocrisy on top, of course, as the Inquisition are hardly strangers to using alien technology when it suits them themselves. Now, this isn't all Inquisitors, mind you, but a fair few of them will use weaponry that was either fashioned by aliens or fashioned using alien technology, like extraordinarily miniaturized digital laser weaponry, or even full custom-made gear from the alien species the Jokero. This orangutan-esque species is somehow, probably through old one nonsense, capable of creating highly advanced technology with virtually no effort whatsoever. You can see how that might be useful for somebody whose duty often involves blowing the heads of heretics and spying on imperial agencies and individuals. Now, the inquisitorial argument on the matter would of course be that they can be trusted to handle these things, whereas everybody else can't. And to be fair, they do have more in the way of expertise when it comes to this nonsense than pretty much everybody else. Still, if they err on the side of safety a little bit too often, there is always the potential that a great deal of technological advancements could be stimmied, not because anything would go wrong, but because something could go wrong. But on the flip side, of course, something could also go wrong, and something could go very very wrong indeed. Considering the potency of some of the lost age of technology nonsense that the Adeptus Mechanicus has discovered, and considering the ridiculous potency of the fully fledged weaponry of the golden age of technology, including ships that fires, you know, black holes as basic ammunition, etc., if you start messing around with this and you don't have adequate supervision, well, the thing with the Adeptus Mechanicus is that whilst the Inquisition tends to err on the side of safety and is often a little bit overly cautious, the Adeptus Mechanicus is the exact opposite. <laughs> they are extraordinarily optimistic, and they tend to err on the side of, let's see if this will blow out a piece of the planet or not. Because I do want to stress, it sounds almost as if the Ordo Machinum are kind of spoil sports here, coming in and hindering the poor Adeptus Mechanicus from improving everybody's lives. And whilst that is a theoretical outcome, the Armageddon one is equally likely. And what happens if the Ordo Machinum discovers a Magos, or several Magi, or even worse, an entire Forge World that might be heading off the reservation. Not necessarily outright chaotic or corrupted in any way, but they have been hiding a little bit more technology than can be entirely overlooked, frankly. And they seem to be engaging in some rather dubious experiments with this technology. What to do? Again, Technically, theoretically, the Adeptus Mechanicus is not quite a part of the Imperium, yet the Emperor, of course, has authority over the Adeptus Mechanicus because he is, or at least so they claim, the Omnisire. So in turn, the God Emperor's agents, the Inquisition, would have authority over the Adeptus Mechanicus. But only so far, bearing in mind as well that higher ranking Adeptus Mechanicus Magi, they have essential full control over their forge worlds, or their expeditions, or whatever area they find themselves in, as they are largely surrounded by well, servitors and automated servants, or otherwise fanatically loyal supporters. This isn't like a uh, high world, for example, where you have dozens of branches of imperial governance, where you might be able to mobilize local PDF forces to strike out against insurgents, or rely on local Arbites' presence to help you arrest a corrupt governor, etc, etc, to the point where you might be able to play one against the other. Let's say that the Arbites, or not the Arbites, the local law enforcement, are loyal to the Magister. Okay, well, so long as the PDF isn't, or at the very least isn't more loyal to him than the God Emperor, then you're golden. If that isn't possible, perhaps local Imperial Guard forces and so on and so on, escalating up the ladder until you arrive at the point where you can do your job. But with the Adeptus Mechanicus, well, good luck convincing a cohort of Skitari to turn on their master. I 
don't even think they're physically capable of doing that. There's not a whole lot of local Imperial law enforcement either. There might be an Abites presence, it's not impossible, but it's very rare. There's certainly not going to be any Imperial PDF forces that are non-Mechanicus, and as for an Imperial Guard, again, it's a potential possibility, but the Adeptus Mechanicus tend to take care of their own defenses by and large, unless the circumstances are very pressing and beyond their abilities to handle. So what do you do? Well, you could just walk into his office and arrest the man. <laughs> and to be fair, there are inquisitors that would do just that. And there are even inquisitors that could pull it off, too. There are inquisitors that travel around with entire goddamn armies, to the point where they don't need any sort of local assistance. There's always also the option of, if you're sure of your case, going to another planet, raising a few dozen Imperial Guard regiments, and then coming back and making the arrest. There are Inquisitors that travels with retinues of Adeptus Astartes, or their own specialized bodyguards that are even those, and I would presume, considering their close ties to the Adeptus Mechanicus, that the Order of Machinium would probably have more than their fair share of allied Skitari and combat servitors as well, but... Well, when you're doing this, you're kind of risking a bit of a confrontation, aren't you? And there are Inquisitors that literally don't care, that are of the opinion that, well, if the target fights back, well, that's evidence that they were guilty. <laughs> these, uh, these Inquisitors are often a little bit, uh, optimistic in terms of their own abilities, but such is life. But if you don't want to upset and okay, here's the thing too. That might work in the Imperium, but with the Adeptus Mechanicus, if you get the wrong guy and you can't prove it, you just upset a lot of Forge Worlds. And they might not be able to move against you overtly, you know, well, it was an Inquisitor who made the arrest, we can't exactly object, but, oh, well, you know, suddenly that sector's Inquisitors, their, their requests for ships and spare parts and combat servitors and all of the other sundries of day-to-day -day life, well... They just run into so many goddamn snags, you know? Production issues, delays, materials that don't show up... You get it. Uh, not to mention, perhaps, a visit by the Adeptus Mechanicus' very own brand of assassins as well. Yes. It would be far better to try and carry out operations against the Mechanicus with a degree of subtlety and surety of purpose. Ideally, the evidence against a particular magi or a coven or whatever would be so convincing that the Inquisitor in question could go straight to that magi's superior and have the Mechanicus take care of the matter internally. This might even earn the Inquisition a fair bit of favor points, actually. Well, you know, we could have dealt with this ourselves, but as you are valued allies and friends, we are going to give you an opportunity to clean your own house. And it is important to remember that for all of their machine-like nature, the Mechanicus is not at all a hive entity or anything like that. There is just as much competition and backstabbing and agendas and factions within the Mechanicus as there is within the Inquisition or any branch of Imperial governance. All you would need to do, ideally speaking, to depose one Magi is figure out who doesn't like him and whether or not they have more friends than the Magi you're after, and voila, jobs are good. Even more so if we're talking about the oversight of STC technology, because again, the mere knowledge of a fraction of STC technology is unfathomably valuable, and so the competition within the Mechanicus to be the first to study a piece of technology, to use it, to reverse engineer it, to adopt a asset of it or a facet of it in some sort of other uh, production scheme or development, they gain a tremendous amount of prestige, of honor, and gravitas within the Mechanicus. And so, there are going to be many, 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 many others who are of the rather strident opinion that they would do a much, much better job if only they were given opportunity. An opportunity that might be provided by the Ordo Machinum. Although the Inquisition would again need to be very careful that they are not perceived as a partisan tool.
It is not up to the agents of the Inquisition to determine what piece of technology is and is not pursued, what is and is not focused on, and who does or does not do it. Well, it sort of actually kind of is, but the Mechanicus would not take kindly to such an interpretation or overt interference within their own internal affairs, which is why, again, it would be best to be subtle in these matters. Unless, again, the evidence is absolutely overwhelming, because there are many proper sins that the Adeptus Mechanicus recognize as well as the Imperium. Now, when it comes to Xenos technology, the line is a pinch blurred. Like, if you have a secret weapon built into your arm that fires Eldar shurikens, all right, you're straddling the edge there, but it'll probably be overlooked. Or digi weapons, or examples of... Uh, Gravitic technology, like gravitanks, for example, because the Imperium does use gravitic technology. So this would be an excellent opportunity for them to go, okay, how does the filthy space elves do it? And can we use that knowledge to figure out how we, the proper good and honest humans, would do it on a larger scale? Yeah, before Cole came in and made gravitational technology basically available in everything in the Imperium these days, but details, details. However, if they discover a Magus that is powering his entire lab with, I don't know, Necron Tear Lightning or something, <laughs> that's a bit more sketchy. Investigating the Necrons, diving into their tombs and discovering some of the technology was a, it's a common plot point, isn't it? A Magos that dug a little bit too deep, a little bit too greedily, and awoken some scary skeleton nonsense in the deep darkness of the Earth, absolutely. But you don't want to just be using it. You don't want to be seeing Adeptus Mechanicus Guitari wielding gorse flayers, for example. That's probably a, quite a bit of an overreach, as the key point here, the Xenos technology must be adapted to human technology. It must be used as a subordinate aspect of human technology. Otherwise, if it is the core key detail, if you're simply just using a gauze flare, but you added on like a reflex sight on it, for example, that ain't gonna cut it. But if you somehow figure out how to replicate the gauze flayer's attack using human machinery and human technology, then that's fine. This too, incidentally, is probably where the Ordo Machinum will require a fair bit of specialized knowledge as well. I would imagine that they would have their own courts of magi and adepts that travel with them wherever they go to give expert insight on the precise nature of uh, a brethren's infractions, or lack thereof, potentially. Yeah, if the Inquisitor is out looking for innocence, which... <laughs> It's a rare thing for an Inquisitor, but could potentially happen, of course, as sometimes, again, the line between using Sinos technology outright and adapting it could be grey and sketchy, diffuse, vague outlines and all that. And this is what makes the Auto Machinum such a way more interesting order than their tiny, tiny little blur of lore indicates. Because imagine, the Inquisition general inquisitors have all of the authority in the world, and whilst they too still have to worry about some degree of politicking, it is usually internal inquisitorial politicking. Even going after a planetary governor is something they can quite easily get away with, so long as it is within the realm of the Imperium. But Machinum. Well, not only do they have to worry about Imperium politics, because pissing off the Mechanicus too much could endanger an entire sector, the same goes for the Inquisition as well. If a Machinum agent treads a little bit too far out of bounds and gets the sector blacklisted, or even just minor interruptions in the usual requests from other Inquisitors, they're gonna start looking for somebody to blame. And then there is the Mechanicus themselves. A whole heap heaping snake's pit of lies, deceit, ambitions, agendas, and power beyond that which the average Inquisitor ever has to worry about. They also need to know a hell of a lot more about their chosen speciality as well. This isn't all secret cults and cabals, those demon sacrifices in dark, dank cellars and hive cities. This is 
technical debates, philosophical discussions about the nature of human technology, theological debates about the nature of the God Emperor and the Omnissiah, where the one begins, where the other ends, and so on. They must even be relatively well versed in STC technology, something that even the mechanics themselves barely understand. And so whilst no Inquisitor can ever be said to have an easy day job, those who choose the path of the Ordo Minoris Machinum probably have a thornier and more difficult one than most. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.